that? That's not a Patron cork. <laughs> Dante doesn't drink Tron. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're gonna start talking about bottles, and this is very much an intermediate technique. By the time you start working on bottles with a nice fitted top, you should have already learned how to pull your walls and make them fairly even, and have some experience with choking your cylinder. If you haven't yet, I have some videos that can help you with that very easily that I will post down below for you. This here is a traditional Japanese shape called a double humped gourd. People like to hold alcohol inside of these, and because of this, it is extremely important that you have a nice fitted top. You don't have to have a cork at the top of this, but I find that it's really nice and it actually helps the functionality as for what people used to use it for quite some time ago. I mean, even if it's not alcohol, you can't just like put liquid in here and you, know, you, gotta, you gotta carry it around. Ceramic items like this were also made quite some time ago in order to hold foods, grain, liquids, and make sure that it's inside of an airtight vessel, except for they usually weren't this small. They were usually far larger. This is where the bottle comes in handy. This shape specifically is a very intermediate shape. You first have to center your clay, pull an entire cylinder, the clay has to come out, has to come back in, has to come back out, has to go back in, and then if you're gonna make it airtight, you have to make sure that it's fitted at the very top, which does inquire some measurements. But don't worry, that's not what we're gonna do today. By the end of these videos, I should have already taught you how to make something like this. But today, we're gonna start off with something a little bit like this. I'm gonna show you guys how to just make a regular bottle shape, which is pretty much just like a big vase that you closed in. And that's pretty much all it is. Sooner or later, we're gonna jump to this double humped gourd. The cool thing about these is that it's not clear like most of our containers in society, so you can put whatever you want in here and no one questions it. Making a regular bottle shape is essentially making a very large ball and then closing it in at the very top to make a very small opening. It's actually extremely easy. May I remind you, this is not thrown in two pieces. I didn't throw one piece and conjoin the two. Now considering that this is an intermediate technique, you should have already learned how to pull a cylinder. So let's do that first. Potter tip. Making a bottle form is extremely easy, but there's a couple of tips I can show you right after you're done forming your cylinder that'll help this experience go a lot easier. Number one potter tip is that you can easily trim this down before you even start. You see, almost every bottle shape has one thing in common, and that's that the bottom is usually, I don't know if I can match it up here, the bottom is usually trimmed down to make the bottom of the piece look a little bit more round. Imagine if the piece just looked like this. Yeah, it would still be a bottle. Yeah, you can still see that curve downward, but it really accentuates it if you have it all the way down here with a nice trimmed foot. Because of this, before you even start forming this bottle, you can make it look a little bit more round by simply trimming off the excess clay or the skirt of the piece right now. Now, when you push this part out, it'll look a lot more round. The second tip that I have to give you is that because we're making a bottle, this portion of the clay, the very top of your cylinder, needs to be put in a lot more. Just like this bottle right here, the very top of your piece is going to be smaller than the rest of the entire piece. And those are honestly the two things that really make a bottle shape. The very top has to be smaller than the entire body, and the bottom has to be nice and orbital. Orbital, nice and or, or, orbital, ni nice and round. And I think we all understand that this part needs to be smaller than the rest of the body. What a lot of people don't understand, especially beginners, is that while you're pulling this in or choking this inwards, you have to leave enough space for your hand to actually fit in there. Which means I'm not forming the top part now. I'm just gonna put it this much so that I can fit my hand inside of the rest of the cylinder. What you should do, so your hand can fit inwards when making a bottle. What you should not do, because now, while technically this is technically a bottle, this is not a very well formed bottle, and you can't really fit your hand in here anymore, except for like two or three fingers. What you should do, what you shouldn't do, okay, I think you get it, because that looks weird. 
Those two little Potter tips are honestly about 60% of this entire equation. So now that you've choked this in a little bit to make it a little bit more narrow, as this will be part of your final shape, and you've trimmed off this bottom, all you really have to do is pop out the bottom. I, of course, like to use my metal rib, but you don't have to do that. You could just pretend you're making a bowl at the very bottom of the cylinder. Make sure to wet your entire hand because you are going to be sticking your whole hand in here and you do not want drag on your hand. Push your hands on the very inside of your cylinder and just pretend, if you already know how, that you're making a bowl. Go all the way down here and push your fingers out just a little bit until you get to the very mid of your clay body. Now some of you will probably notice that I stopped right at the shoulder of the piece. And especially if you've already gone through my vase making series, you'll identify this as the shoulder simply because I told you to stop right here. You guys see what I was talking about now? How this part kind of comes inward at the very bottom of the foot and this really makes that bottle shape. This really makes that circle, that round part. You can technically even make it even more round looking by just cutting off a little bit more as it spins. Now this part is really the make or break moment, because as we pushed out this round part here, you'll probably notice that we stopped at the shoulder. I went all the way down to the very bottom of the cylinder and I kept pushing out the belly until I got about three fourths up the body. Stopping right here is extremely important because if you went all the way out and just pushed it all the way out, you'd have a massively difficult time choking this inwards. It's a little bit weird because it's almost like an optical illusion. This piece isn't actually extremely round. What we really did is we trimmed off the foot a lot to make it look a little bit more round. And we're kind of gonna do that with the top part. That's why I told you to stop at the shoulder. It's difficult to explain, so let me just show you. Take the other one fourth of your clay body, cause you stopped at the three fourths mark up here, and choke this in. Do you see this part right here? This actually looks a lot more round than it did before. Last time, this part was round, and now the rest of this is pretty much round. I technically didn't make this any more round, nor did I stick my fingers in there and push out the clay body at the other part of the clay, right here. I only pushed out the clay right here. This, making this part small, and making this part small down here, leaves the rest of this clay out, which gives it the appearance that you pushed it out and made it round, when technically, you only pushed out a little bit. Potter's warning. The most skilled of throwers and crafters have a habit of making the belly as big as possible while making the mouth of a bottle or a vase as small as possible and doing whatever they want with it. I'm sure you guys have all seen that potty on Instagram with tiny, tiny little tops and big bodies. And this is essentially a testament to skill. It's almost like a badge of honor for a potter while saying I can do this with my hands. This is the first step in learning how to do something like that. But be warned, the more that you push this out, it's gonna be a little more difficult to hold this in. And the smaller you make this, while trying to make this larger, the more difficult this task is going to get. So while making a very basic shape, try not to do that. If you're just learning how to do this, just practice popping the belly out a little bit and then making the mouth just small enough to drink out of. Now what I like to do right when I'm at the stage is leave just enough space right here to fit a couple of fingers on the inside right here, get my metal rib, and curl my fingers and make this a little bit more round. And then you can choke this in a little bit more if it always comes out, it's not too difficult. Potter tip. After choking this in, you're not really supposed to leave it like this. It's highly suggested that you take this little tiny mouthpiece here and pull it just a little bit. This will make the clay a little bit more even and allow you to form it however you want. On top of that, it's extremely common for this portion right here, the very top, to get a little bit wiggly. So you guys can very easily just do the trick that I showed you with the bowls from before and just cut it off with your pin tool. And this will even it out something real nice. Super duper Potter Sonic the Hedgehog looks bad in its new movie, Cheat Code. This is one of my favorite things to do because I want this a little bit more round or at least I want to give it the illusion of it looking a little bit more round. 
So what I usually do is I get my metal rib, I go right to the shoulder, I form it a little bit like this, and I just push down. Then I'll take this portion of my metal rib, the curved part here, and I'll put it right up against the mouthpiece. Pushing down with my metal rib and then turning it upside down to make a slight curve right here does two things. Number one, if anyone ever decides to drink from this, which you know those weirdos who like anime way too much do? Oh, you mean you, Dante? The human lip pushes outwards like this, and this curve pushes outwards as well. This will fit the human lip just fine. This is more of a crafter's point, as if anyone ever decides to drink from this like the weirdo they would be, you can see their lip fitting very comfortably on this little curve right here. The human lip pushes out, this kind of pushes outwards as well, and they'll fit very, very comfortably together. And there you go, you have just made your very first bottle form. This isn't really too hard, and this honestly is just a vase that has a very small mouth. The difference in between a bottle and a vase that is small is number one, its size, and number two, the ability to be able to drink from it. And when making a bottle, the top matters a lot more than the rest of the body does. The body should only essentially hold liquid, while the top should be comfortable to hold and to drink from. It's one of the reasons why whenever I'm done with my bottle shapes, I always take a sponge and just kind of smooth out, especially the top. The top is really, really important whenever making something to drink out of, such as cups or bottles. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. I really hope this helped you guys. I know that this is basically an entire lesson of making a cylinder, popping out the middle portion of it, and making sure the bottom pieces are smaller than the middle portion. That's pretty much what a bottle is, with the exception of making this part extra drinkable from, extra from, extra from, is just drink from it. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. We have a fantastic Discord and Facebook community. If you'd like to join any of us over there, there's always really helpful people on that server. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Soon enough, we're probably gonna move on to double hump gourds because if you can kinda look at it, if you just delete this part right here, this is pretty much what we learned how to make today. We pretty much just learned how to shorten the bottom, push out the body, and then shorten the top as well. And this is pretty much half of a double humped gourd. The only difference is you have to learn how to do the rest of it in one throw. So good luck on your next throw and I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Can I just like put a line right here and then call it a double humped gourd? No, you little cheater.